Okay guys, so I've had a really bad day today and I haven't taken Milo on a walk in a very long time. So we are gonna be taking my pet meerkat Milo on a little walk. I usually walk Milo and just let him follow me everywhere, but it's nighttime, so it's probably best to put him in a harness. And I don't walk him so much anymore because he lives with Dorothy, the female meerkat who doesn't like me. So it's hard to actually get Milo to myself, but she's actually starting to relax lately. What are you doing, Milo? We're going for a walk, not a cuddle. So after some hard work, I've got Milo in his little harness and he just looks so cute. Come on, Milo, let's go for a walk. No, it's not playtime either. So we're walking downstairs. <laughs> Good boy, Milo. You ready to go outside? Oi, come on then. The cars really scare him, but he does really appreciate some time on the grass. <laughs> my dogs can see him and they're going crazy. He does have a tendency to stay under my legs, so I do have to hold him a little bit away from me because I obviously don't want to trip on him. But we're just walking along the street like you would with your dog and he is being such a good boy. A quick cuddle break just so he knows I'm here. I love you, my little baby. <laughs> and look, he is just so well behaved. He doesn't try and fight away or anything like that because he's just so used to being around me. You're such a good boy. Maybe next time we can bring Dorothy. <laughs> well, for Milo's first walk on a harness in a very long time, he's been such a good boy. So we're gonna go back now and we'll slowly start taking him longer. And it'll be great to get Dorothy out on a walk because she'll have less of an intention to attack me and more of an intention to protect me. Oh, we found a little cat. <laughs> Milo, look, it's a little cat. Look, look down there. He's not interested. He's like, we've got cats at home and we are going home. <laughs> Stay tuned for more of our adventures. Hey guys, so I'm going to be turning this caterpillar into a butterfly and I thought what a better idea to turn him into friends with- Milo? That was my caterpillar! We recently adopted this rejected baby fox and here's what we feed him. So I'm starting off with a nice big chunk of meat and jelly. Obviously eventually he'll be fed mostly raw food but he's far too young to be eating anything raw now. I'm now going to mash this all up and turn it into a paste. I'm now preparing some milk and we use milk powder and sterile water and then we turn that all into a little milk that's got all of the nutrients he needs at his age and then we're going to mix it into the dog food. I'm now going to pour the milk into the dog food and mix it all together. By the way guys, foxes in captivity have a very complex diet. It's just very simple for now because he's so young. And now it's time to take the dinner up to little baby Foxy. And as I'm sure you're aware, foxes are nocturnal and due to his age, me and my mum have had to be up a lot in the night time, waking up every two or so hours just to make sure he's okay and to check on him. I just want to let you guys know that a fox is not a pet. He will become very, very aggressive and very destructive at about six months old. And that's generally when people who have thought getting a fox was a good idea end up getting rid of them. He's not going to live inside forever and he's not going to be cute and cuddly just like a little dog. He is a fox and foxes are wild. And I want to let you guys know it's not just me who takes care of these animals. There's three of us currently and this team will expand over time. I'll keep you guys updated and please do your research before thinking about getting any pets. Okay, let's make the world's smallest papaya milk jellies. So I am a sucker for these TikTok food trends. They never work, but this one actually looks easy. But in the UK, we only have mini papayas and this is the biggest I could find. Okay, so we're just gonna start by beheading our papaya. And now we just basically have to scoop out all the guts. It's a bit like a pumpkin. Skinning the papaya is simply for aesthetic reasons, but I'm scared that it's gonna go all brown when it's in the fridge. I'm only making one today because if this is a fail, I can just try again with another papaya. Now we need our mini pan and to this we're going to add coconut milk and gelatine. Fun fact, I nearly sliced three of my fingers open on a can when I was younger and I still have scars all over my fingers. 
Okay, I'm really confused. My coconut milk looks like it's already turned to um jelly. Okay, I didn't shake the coconut milk before use and that's why it looked like that, but I've mixed it all together and now we're gonna add a packet of gelatine. And we're gonna slowly mix this until it's all dissolved together. Okay guys, it's all ready and we're gonna pour this in. Oh gosh, okay. Okay, so the jelly is now in there and that was pretty easy. Okay, I'm now gonna put this in the fridge and I'll be back in two hours with an update. Okay guys, so I just took the papaya milk jelly out of the fridge and it seems to have set pretty well, so let's cut it. Okay, so I just cut it into three big chunks and it looks so good. Look, it's like proper jelly. And let's do a taste test. Okay, it actually really tastes like um, sticky rice and mango, but the coconut's a bit sour. Not bad for a first try. I actually really recommend it, it's amazing. Letting Milo rate different foods, let's go. Ow! Okay, first on the list is apple, and Milo really loves apple, but he kind of just chews it up and doesn't swallow it. I think that one's a solid 10 out of 10. Next up is banana, and he's going crazy. Ow! Okay, I got bit pretty bad on my finger that time, but Milo is devouring the piece of banana. Yum, yum. That has to be like an 11 out of 10. Okay, next up is pear and he, oh, bye Milo. He's absolutely loving the pear. He doesn't have pear very much, so I think he's a little bit confused by the texture, but he's like, mmm, pear. Okay, I'm running out of time on this video, but if you guys would like a part two, let me know. How was that Milo? Good. Answering frequently asked questions about owning one of these guys, which is a meerkat. Okay, so I have two pet meerkats, so I get lots of questions about other people potentially wanting meerkats. Don't get me wrong, they are the cutest of pets and they're very rewarding to own, but they do take a lot of work. Number one, should you get a pet meerkat? Off the bat, I would say absolutely not. You need an extreme amount of time to get them this tame and you more than likely need more than one and the female meerkats are very, very hard to deal with. Our female meerkat Dorothy will not come anywhere near a human and she will just attack you. And this does rub off on Milo, so it's quite a challenge getting him away from her. Number two, meerkat diets. The diet for meerkats is pretty simple. Um, we use a dog food, a taurine supplement, and then lots of bugs. But the live food is very expensive, so it does actually add up pretty fast. You also need different things with enrichment, so it's very time consuming. And number three is aggression. Meerkats are vicious. I'll post a part two because I'm running up. I have 30 pets, but my Sphinx cats are some of the hardest to look after because of how dirty they get. I've just put an ear flush in Twiglet's ears and now I'm gonna get all the gunk out and show you just how bad it can get. So I'm just going in with the cotton bud and very carefully removing the gunk that I can actually see. And already gunk is appearing. Look guys, this is all of the dirt I've managed to get out so far. And now that Twiglet's all clean, let's go and pick her an outfit. Mwah, I love you. I think this week we should go matching, so Gristle can have this one and Twiglet can have this one. And now she looks beautiful, she can go warm up. Bye! My friend has a hundred pets, and today I'm going to show you as many as I can. And this right here is Tallulah the goat. Hello! So these are all of the goats. And this one is mum and baby, but they're really hard to catch. Okay, and this is Zeppardy the goat. <laughs> Okay, and this is Inky, the American miniature horse who is pregnant right now. And she is due right this minute. So any minute now, Inky. And this is Nelly here, and that's her baby. And she's not got a name, so you can choose a name for her. <laughs> and this is Lucy, and she feels so soft. Hello, Lucy. Hello, baby. And here's Jules, and she's also pregnant. Hello, Jules. Okay, and this one is Bombay Brat and he is very soft hello baby but obviously he's not used to being touched too much so he's just getting used to things oh my gosh and look who we have here guys i will be doing a part two my friend has 100 pets and this is part two of all of her pets and look at this little baby lamb that was just born yesterday okay guys and now we have roxanne the donkey look at how beautiful she is hello and we have lots of other donkeys here as well and then the random horse and now we have ellie the rare breed woolly miniature donkey and she just tried to say hello but she can't speak hello ellie 
Look how cute she is, and she's tiny. Okay, and this is Fluff, and she's a rare breed woolly donkey. And there's only about 200 um, rare breed woolly donkeys left in the world. Miniature. And then we have Hello. some other donkeys, but these aren't miniature Hello. woolly donkeys. <laughs> Okay guys, so today we're letting Milo react to me eating different foods, and today's is whipped cream. Ready? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, so that was an absolute fail, and as you can see, Milo has just bitten both of my lips. Completely not his fault, um, obviously. I knew that he would go crazy for it, I just didn't think he would try and, um, maybe <laughs> bite my lips, but Jesus, okay. Hey guys, so today I'm taking Pongo, our baby rescued fox cub, on his first ever walk. Mwah. Over the past few days, Pongo has started getting a lot more playful, so it's definitely time for him to go and run around on some grass. He hasn't had his injections yet, so it's important that we stick to our own house. So it will only be outside on the grass, but I just want to see how he finds it. Right now he's eyeing up Twiglet, my sphinx cat. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've just put Pongo down on the grass to experience it a little bit and it is quite cold out here and there's a little bit of rain so I'm not sure how he's going to find it. Oh no, Pongo's already so scared and he's just ran straight back to the house. Pongo, you've got to give it a go. Yeah. Go away, fly. Hey, it's okay. Yes, it is. Okay, so Pongo's had a breath of fresh air, but he just wants to run back inside, so I'm going to take him back indoors. As you guys know, foxes are most active at night time, so I'm going to take him outside tonight and see if he likes it a little bit more. But at least he got to experience it. <laughs> Unboxing mystery pets I ordered on eBay, day one. Okay, so I didn't actually order this pet on eBay, I just wanted to continue my series. I have put this over him just so he's not too overwhelmed, because it's a very sunny day and he likes to be in the dark. But we've got rid of that and let's see what we've got. I've actually wanted this pet for a very long time. They're very, very cute. I'm gonna unclip his little box so that you guys can see him properly. Can you see him? Now you can. So this little guy right here is an albino horn frog and we know he's albino because of his very red eyes. Ah. I don't know if he is a he or she or they or them or whatever. But I'm going to say that he's a he because today is the king's coronation, so he's going to be called Queen Charles. Anyway, I'm going to go inside and set him up a new home. Guess an animal? Frog. Oh, <laughs> Mom! Mom! <laughs> okay, guess an animal beginning with... Mum! No! Ah! <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't really want to date <laughs> Um, frog, <laughs> fence, fox, fox, <laughs> pig. Oh. Hmm. Um, I can't hold it up that high five. Turtle, <laughs> it's too heavy. <laughs> Mum, apple, oh, <laughs> fuck me. You do need to sit back on the chair. Okay. <laughs> Ventilope. <laughs> Ventilope. Oh, God, this is awful. V venison. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I've told you before, I am building a zoo. But not yet. Because you can't build a zoo without becoming a zoologist, right? So what do I have to do before I build a zoo? I have to study zoology. So guys, while I study zoology online, I also want to be out in the wild studying and learning as much about animals as I possibly can. You guys look at me as an animal expert because I have so many. But the truth is, you can't ever learn too much. I still have so many things to learn. So I want to travel around the world volunteering at conservations, working with lots of different animal groups who are doing amazing things for animals in the wild and in captivity, and I need your help. If you know of any local animal rescues or sanctuaries local to you, even if it's just a 10 minute drive away, please get in touch because I will be there and I'm gonna come and help. And this could be from a dog sanctuary to a big leopard sanctuary. <laughs> I just wanna work and learn and share the experience of being around animals with as many people as I can. So get in touch. 
I have 30 pets and I'm not really afraid of too many animals, but here are some animals I'm pretty scared of and why. Sharks. Okay, so I literally just showed you guys today that I'm hatching a shark, but it's a bamboo shark, which could never really hurt you. But see a great white or a tiger shark or a bull shark. Those sharks, I'm absolutely terrified. And I'm not actually scared of the sharks themselves. I've actually swam with sharks. I'm more scared of the idea of being in the ocean, looking down or looking to my side and seeing a shark because I've watched the Megalodon way too many times. Sorry, I've watched the Meg, not the Megalodon. Anyway, next is the UK house spider. I can't stand these. I actually love all types of spiders. I've held so many spiders. I actually find spiders very fascinating. But see these UK house spiders. When I was younger, I started hallucinating them because I was so scared and it caused me just to be terrified of them. Wasps or actually anything buzzing near my ear really freaks me out. But wasps especially, I just don't like their little evil faces. I love bees though. And the brown rat. I love rats. I think they're cool and intelligent, but the brown- Everybody wants one and it's time for an updated pet tour. This is a white tree frog and I have three of these guys. This one is Prudence. My frogs love to hide, but as you can see, we have another one back there. We have Prudence, who I just showed you. And I'm not sure where our other- There we go. She's a big fat one. Then we have my crazy parrot Goose, and he just loves to Mwah! kiss. We have Stanley, my Asian forest scorpion, and he is hiding here. And we have a gross mealworm beetle. I, I really don't like those beetles, and I have to take them out. Why are there so many? Oh no, what's, what's happening? A lot of our animals eat mealworms, and then the mealworms turn into beetles, and then we have to get rid of the beetles, because not a lot of Andy animals actually eat the beetles. <laughs> This is Pongo, our baby fox cub, and he is having some bonding time with Molly. He has to be slowly introduced to all of the dogs individually. And then here we have my shark egg, and this is a bamboo shark egg. It's not some crazy shark, don't worry. He's not going to be a pet, I'm just hatching him for the experience. Then here are my two little cats who have been sleeping. I shall make a part two soon. Unboxing mystery parcels, day one, let's go. Okay, so because I make videos online, I get a lot of PR packages, but I just let them build up because I have so many boxes. <laughs> Today, we're going to start making our way through those boxes, and I'm starting off with this package because I think I know what it is. So I opened the box up, and it says Feastables, and I think this is the Mr. Beast chocolate bars. Okay, we're opening it up. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys, so I don't actually think these are out in the UK yet, but we have three different flavors and 30 different chocolate bars. The first one we're going to try is D's Nuts. Okay, and the inside is uh, peanut butter. Pretty good, eight out of 10. Next up, we have the standard milk chocolate. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, not my favorite, seven out of 10. Okay, then this one is Mr. Beast Crunch. Let's try this. 10 out of 10, I love it. Hey guys, so these are my two pet Tenrix. This is Simon and this is Flo. And no, Simon doesn't have anything wrong with his eyes. He's just a male Tenric. Anyway, about two years ago, Simon and Flo had babies together, and then they just stopped hanging out with each other, they didn't sleep together, and they kind of fell out. But lately, they've started getting it on again, and we've heard some noises, so we're going to do an animal pregnancy test on Flo the Tenric. We've got Flo chilling right here. Hello, my beautiful Flo. I love you. You're so lazy. And when she pees, we've got to collect some of her urine on here, and then it will tell us if she's pregnant. Oh, I actually believe she is already going to the toilet. Oh my goodness, good girl flow. Look at her stretching to get all of that poo out. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's so cute. We've got a poo and that should follow with a pee, so we've just got to wait. It looks like she's going for it. The lovely flow did a wee for us. We've collected it and I'll be back in two hours with a result. Hey guys, it's Sunday, which means we've had a brilliant week of going live and I'm going to be feeding Milo an insect from each top gifter. Are you excited for your treats, Milo? Yes. <laughs> And by the way, Dorothy will also be getting the same amount of insects. I'm just not going to film it because she will just want to attack me. All of the top gifters will be tagged in this video. And if you do want to be featured in next week's video, then make sure to head to my live. Milo, this one is from Cartier Rodriguez. Enjoy. Chomp, chomp. Next up, we have a Morio worm from Yava Bava. And Milo is enjoying that one a little bit too much. <laughs> now it's time for a locust from DP366. Or 2336, sorry. Now we have a Moria worm from Jimmy, and Jimmy is one of our biggest gifters ever. This lovely locust is from Dominic. Oh, good catch, Milo. Say thank you. Now we have a Moria worm from Great Da. Yum, yum. <laughs> this locust is from Casper. Enjoy, Milo. Next up, we have a Moria worm from the Moon King, but Milo just stole that from me. Milo. This locust is from Zainal. Let's see if he can catch it. 
Oh, there we go. Say thank you to Zainal. This Morio worm is from Dobby Tattoos and wow, he really wanted that. And last but not least, we have a locust from Eddie. Thank you guys so much. Me and Milo are very, very grateful. And if you want to be featured in next week's video, make sure to join my live this week and any gifts over 5k coins in total will get you a feature. And I just want to let everybody know that any of the money from my live streams is going into land so I can start my own animal sanctuary. I'm now going to give Dorothy a mealworm box and keep Milo away so he can't steal any. Thank you guys. Your support means the world. I love you lots. Today is the day where I make all of my animals hate me and I snip their nails. Hello ma'am, welcome to my nail salon. How can I help you? Oh, good girl. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's Gristle done, and I don't bother with her back claws until they're like really overgrown because she's not scratching anything or she doesn't use them to climb so much. Same for Twiglet, and we like to do it nice and quick just so that they don't get distressed. And the other, um, foot. <laughs> and that's the cat's all done, and although it looks super easy, it's actually not because you don't want to cut into the quick, because if you do, you will get the lud. Also, my cats need a bath today, so if you'd like a video of me scrubbing off all of that oil, let me know. I'm hatching a shark egg, and we've got to set up an incubation tank for him. I'm using an old tank, and I've given it a good wash. I mean, we do have some staining, but that's nothing harmful. We have everything to keep the water healthy right here, and this will pump water from the tank through the filter. It will collect all the good bacteria and come back out. Anyway, we don't have to cycle this tank because there's not going to be any waste as of now. I'm just going to fill this up with salt water and we're ready to go. And at some point I will be adding some live sand so that we have bacteria coming from there too. And by the way, I'm obviously learning. I'm just going off of what I've learned from a few videos. So please give me any tips as I'm not the most experienced in fish. Oh gosh. <sighs> okay guys, it's now time to cut our shark egg bag open. And I'll be giving you guys little weekly updates. Um, I will be actually stringing him up so that he's sitting in the right position. But yeah, stay tuned.